victory in the senatorial race to, to Senator Therese Terlai. Senator, welcome and congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you to KUAM for the coverage last night. Without you, we wouldn't have known what was going on. So thank you so much. You, you guys are tough. And uh, I heard Tello, Senator Tello in the middle of the night, even you guys are really great. Thank you so much. Thank you for all and getting all the messages out during this campaign. And uh, thank you. I, if I could just say thank you too to the people of Guam. Yes. I'm very grateful, very humbled. Uh, honestly, it's it's been a tough year two years so i'm i'm happy and it's really it's a really hard time for people to think about voting you know getting out and voting when you know they're still facing so many so many challenges and right. that's um i think that's going that's uh why this legislature is going to be a very different one because we're coming in with with a very serious uh situation and uh so I just hope that we can all, you know, get together, get on that same page as, as how we are going to move forward. We're going to move everyone forward, mm -hmm. everyone. Right. And, you know, we're looking at a 8-7 a Democrat majority, but you're really uh, going to be working with some really experienced uh, uh, senators returning to the legislature. Um, how excited are you uh, about that, considering um, the um, hard times ahead for, for Guam? Um, well, I, I, I welcome that. I think, uh, you know, I've actually, this is a little bit different dynamic, right? We're going into legislature where, at least for me, I know these people. I've worked with them before. I was mm -hmm. counsel to the legislature when, when most of them were senators. And uh, so I, I have a good working relationship with, with each of them. And so I look forward to that. And that's, uh, I think, all we really need is we need a good working relationship with everyone. And uh, we need to be able to put the people of Guam first. Did you yes, not have so. a good working relationship with the current legislature? No, we do. Yes, <laughs> but, but it's harder, you know, when you don't you go in not knowing them oh, at come all. Come on, we are learning I've, about I've each seen other. I've <laughs> seen uh, some of the sessions and the hearings. <laughs> Sabrina, <laughs> Sabrina, yeah. Well, no, that's hard. Sabrina. I'm not, I don't think anybody should walk into the legislature thinking, you know, the goal is just to get along all the time. I mean, we have to we have to work together, but we're going to disagree. And so as long as we can disagree with, you know, respect, disagree and move forward, that's the goal. And and but but I think a better government is when we're going to hear everything. The more you hear, the better you're going to make your government. I really, really believe in that. So uh I I will listen to anyone, and that's that's I think um, what we need. We need a lot more listening. Right. Yes. Do you, okay. And speaking of listening, do you think maybe in the standing rules, when you guys go in recess, you could just leave the mics on? Because you know I've oh. seen a lot of you know hand wavings and snaps. It's and hard to like read that. lips with a mask. You know. <laughs> I'll say. Yeah, that's a tricky thing, huh? Yeah. There, were, there were a lot of recesses, that's true. Yeah. Um, Senator, I know you're not one to toot your own horn, but I'm going to ask you to. What, what do you think it is? Last election, top vote getter. This election, top vote getter. What do you think it is about you and your service to the people that, that resonates in, in this way? You know, I, I'm, I'm very grateful that they trust me, but I... I uh, what I really think it is, it's it's not as much me as it is. They want a legislature that does what a legislature is supposed to do. And so they're hoping I'm going to do that for them. That uh, And that's what exactly what they tell me the most. They don't tell me, oh, you're so nice, you're so anything. They say, thank you for fighting for us. Thank you for always thinking of us first. Thank you for asking the hard questions. And people actually say that to me. And so I, I'm so grateful because it, it means a lot that, that uh, that's my approach to the legislature and that they they seem to want that to be that's that's the way a legislature can work well with the government of Guam. We need to know the facts and we need to, you know, ask the hard questions. And so uh, I'm just very glad that the people of Guam are very, um, very smart that way. They they educate me every day that they are paying attention very closely. They know the nuances of, of the issues that have been going on for 20 years and that have not been resolved yet. And, and they can see right through special interests. I, I'm very grateful for that. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm very grateful um, you know, You know, Chris mentioned it. You were the top vote getter uh, in the last uh, election. You're the top vote getter in this election. But, you know, when you look back at the last election, I would have thought that as being the top vote getter, you would have been the, the speaker. 
uh, of uh, the legislature. Is that something that you're 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 kind of positioning towards uh, for this particular legislature? Well, I'm not this one, but in the 36th. Well, now that we know who the you know uh, majority is and uh, who uh, you know got in. Uh, we're going to have to work across the aisles because the margin is very low and we're going to have to um, do better than we did this year. So whoever is the speaker, they just going to have to, to uh, we're going to have to elect a speaker and it could be anyone as long as that speaker is going to take care of the people of Guam first, not take care of any of their colleagues or take care of any of their special interests, but take care of the people of Guam first. And as long as we can get that, you know, I'm, I'm good with that. So, um, we're gonna, yeah, I think the Democrats, uh, as the majority party would have to get together and, and, and decide. Uh, Senator, how much does this, uh, eight, seven, uh, shift? I mean, you guys still have the majority, but how much do you think it, it changes the dynamic of the next two years heading into this, uh, next election, a gubernatorial one? Oh, I think it changes the dynamic a lot. I, I think, um, obviously if they're positioning, I've in the last legislature I was in, it was, you know, a legislature right before a gubernatorial election. And I was amazed because I was a relatively new senator and I was seeing gubernatorial politics in the legislature. Yeah. And um, I don't, you know, I don't wish that on anyone, but yeah. uh, I know that, you know, we are very aware that that's, that's what's coming down. I, I'm hoping that that's not how the legislature is going to be run. I think that's a mistake. I think that's when we get into all kinds of trouble. That's when you lose majorities. You know, we need to stick to what's best for the people of Guam and let the gubernatorial politics play itself out, you know, in another arena, not here with us in the legislature while we are trying to take care of the people. Right. We've, we've watched a lot of sessions and, uh, you know, just tracking the last couple of years. Uh, you've had some very impassioned, uh, you know, speeches on the floor. Uh, there are times where uh, you and several of your colleagues appeared, you know, frustrated uh, at, at some points, just uh, flabbergasted and exasperated by the goings on uh, during session. So when you get these results uh, uh, from the election, uh, do you believe it's a validation at the end of the day? Does it does it make all those uh, tough moments of the last couple of years worth it? I, I have to admit, uh, I feel it makes me feel more emboldened and I, I want to feel emboldened as a Senator. You want to feel like you've got the people behind you that, uh, that as long as you fight for them, they will be behind you. And so I do, I, I feel very good about that because when I walk into that session hall, you know, it's a huge pressure because you have to, you have to put away, you know, your friendships and every other thing you have to bring in this weight of the people of Guam. I, and, um, and you can see, you know, when people do that, it, you know, it's, uh, we're going to work together very well, I think, when we can do that. And you got to come in there, not, not for yourself, but for, for everyone else, for how we're going to raise the rest of the people of Guam up, you know, how we're going to bring everybody up to a standard of living despite COVID, despite, you know, the closure of businesses, despite everything that they've gone through and, and bring them back, bring our, bring our school kids back to, you know, that resiliency, that's what we're fighting for right now. Yeah, Senator, I wanted to, I wanted to ask you, because this is Jason, and I remember I had the good pleasure of interviewing you in your first, um, <laughs> when you were first elected, and, um, you know, former Speaker B.J. Cruz was introducing you and some of your colleagues and saying, you know, we have this new crop of legislators, but by no means are they are they brand new. You know, you were a legislative counsel, you know, you, you're a lawyer, you've got a lot of experience and a lot you brought to the legislature, um, but he was mentoring you and, and getting you ready to take the next step. Um, what will you bring to, even though we don't necessarily have a, a whole new crop of senators and everything like that, what do you always try and, and, and approach when you're trying to pass on your knowledge and your wisdom to people just coming in to the practice of becoming a policymaker? Oh, uh, thanks. That's a, that's a good question. Uh, well, for me, yeah, I just feel like there's always two sides, sometimes three, four, right, to any situation. And when something has not been solved for many years, a lot of times it's because there are competing interests. And that is uh, the toughest part of your job is going to be, how do you really assess the competing interests? Because 
it's not easy. That's difficult. They, they will hide sometimes the real interest behind what's going on. You're going to have to dig. You're going to have to get the truth. You're going to have to put that on the table. And you're going to have to be you know, tough enough to say, that's not good for all the people of Guam. That's only good for a very small, um, you know, part or one business or something. And you're going to have to uh, stand up to it. So I would tell anyone that if they can do that, and it takes hard work. So it's hard work because you got to get to the bottom of the issue. You got to get the truth. You got to fight them sometimes to get the truth. But once you get the truth, then then stand firm. Because even if you make an error, if you make an error that is in good faith based on the facts that are before you, I think we make errors because the facts, we don't have them all, you know? And we've seen that so much in this last term. That's the problem. You know, we're not getting all the facts that we need, I think, to to move quicker and to move uh, better for the people of Guam. First order of business, uh, 36 Guam legislature for you, Senator? Well, you know, uh, we still got to... Um, month and a half left in this term that we're facing uh, one of the biggest crises of our lives, uh, all of our lives, and we are going to have to get all of us out of this. So uh, it's hard to think about doing anything that's not related to, you know, helping public health save lives, helping GMH save lives, and then, you know, helping all the businesses uh, get back to get back to business, you know, get and people get back to their life but first i want to save some life i uh we can't have any more delays on in what public health has been tasked to do and what they are able to do and and all of us have to uh be willing to, to do that for them with them and you guys have done a great great job at it i think uh media wise you've you really put it out there the messages you bring on the the professionals every day we hear their story firsthand that's excellent, and so thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I, I can't tell you how much I've, I've heard Lillian on your station or Public Health, and the more you hear them, even if I talk to them, but when they get on your show and they say it in a different way, or, you know, it's a, that's a full picture, and, and I appreciate that very much. So thank, keep, keep getting at the truth, and, and appreciate that, real time. Thank you, thank you. As, as Senator, you're currently the Committee Chair on Health, Tourism, uh, Land, and uh, Judiciary. Do, are you wanting to keep uh, a retain uh, oversight on these uh, committees in the in the next legislature? Uh, well, um, I think um, yes. Well, there, I definitely have um, work that I'm going to do in each of these areas in the next legislature. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of it, you know, we've started. Uh, some of them are complex. For example, the Chamar Land Trust, some complex issues there, getting that infrastructure in there, those are complex and I do want to work on them. So whether it's committee chair or or just uh, as a member of the committee, uh, I'm going definitely not going to turn my back on public health, uh, land, you know, mm -hmm. the justice issues that I've been working on or uh, historic preservation, all of them, those are my passion, right? And uh, tourism, as we know, we're not going to really move much if we can't get tourism back back up so we are going to do our best for all of those all of those departments and all of these uh subjects yes at the uh sorry i see uh, my colleague here yeah morning <laughs> congratulations <laughs> that's like we bring on senator uh senator sabina Perez, uh incumbent uh democrat here Good morning. uh finishing 14th uh with 10113 uh votes congratulations senator congratulations, congratulations. Uh, thank you Thank you so much, uh, Chris and Sabrina. <laughs> and thank you for all your, um, you know, exposure on, on the interviews. That really helped. I think every everything helped along the way. And uh, thank you to all the voters out there for, for continuing your trust in me. And, you know, I, I worked hard this past term, and I'm still working hard, and I, I will continue to work hard. I think we definitely, you know, we need to restore the health of our community, uh, this, you know, and guide our people through this pandemic. I, I'm serious. I'm very serious about that. Um, both uh, health-wise and uh, economically. Uh, I'm going to put the hard work into that. Uh, Senator, how different was this campaign? And I'm not even sure how much, you know, campaigning you did this election, but how different was it from uh, you, the well, you first time do. you ran? Yeah, uh, well, last time it was a gubernatorial race. Right. And so it was, um, you know, Basically, I had to, uh, you know, basically I hung around the, the gubernatorial camps, every all the gubernatorial camps. There were four, I believe, four candidates at the time. And that really helped. And also just, um, you know, meeting people, 
Uh, this time around, it's, um, you know, had to be uh, offline. Um, and, you know, uh, doing the work, I, I was hoping that the work that I did would uh, speak for itself. Um, you know, that I was hoping, I was basically praying on that, <laughs> praying on, praying that people were seeing the work that I was doing uh, was important to them. Um, and uh, social media, yeah, that's something that I'm not really, uh, um, you know, an expert at. So I was very, I was very thankful <laughs> and praying that, uh, you know, that weakness wasn't going to, uh, you know, have a, a, a huge effect. So... Uh, what do you plan on continuing uh, and now that uh, you're pretty much guaranteed a seat in the next uh, legislature? Are you, you want to, we asked Senator Terlahi this, uh, are you going to try and keep the same committees? Uh, yeah, that's something I'm thinking. I, you know, I really like the environment. I like, um, you know, I, I got used to it. You know, I learned a lot and I have all these solutions too as well. Um, but, you know, I'm open to uh, whatever, you know, whatever the, the, the uh, party wants and decides, uh, you know, I feel I can adapt uh, easily. I'm, I'm a quick learner. Um, so I'm willing to help out in whatever way um, that, you know, I'm needed. Always have, <laughs> always have. I, I was always, um, you know, open to whatever was the community needed. Um, so likewise. Are you uh, satisfied uh, with uh, your placing, uh, Senator? What, did you see any polls? Is this what uh, you were anticipating, or are you just happy to get in? And, and yeah, I was, I was expecting to be on the bubble, to be honest. So I wasn't sure whether I was going to get in, um, considering the, you know, I didn't really run a campaign to the best I think I should have. Right. Um, but um, yeah, I'm just ha happy and very grateful um, that I got in. <laughs> So, um, no, this is what I expected, uh, right. to be on the bubble. Mm -hmm. Right. So well, what it, uh, I, I wanted to go to Senator, uh, Titano. Yeah. Let's, uh, go to, um, uh, you know, your colleague, Senator Marsha Titano, who, uh, unfortunately with the results that we have now, uh, was on the wrong side of the bubble, uh, 16th, 9,179. uh, votes incumbent Democrat, Senator, uh, Kelly Marsh Titano, uh, just Senator your thoughts on on these um results if if you could and good morning well of course you know first of all i want to thank everybody having over nine thousand votes with i i think it was like twenty two thousand people who came out you know i think really speaks a lot about the community values and priorities and um i just really appreciate that so you know, I grew up here. I'm a daughter of Guam. I'm still here. I, I plan on continuing to be a community activist. And so when I woke up this morning, well, it, it's happened throughout the campaign, but uh, this morning, but um, I don't know if the rest of you guys have it, but it's this strange little tan line <laughs> between <laughs> where my eyes squint and the masks start. So I've got this uh, <laughs> odd tan line here but yeah i was just on my way to i was just on my way to go put out my thank you signs um and i saw your your message so i thought i'd pop on first and just thank everybody in person ish right. yeah. uh, virtually <laughs> uh senator i gotta say that uh you know your term has uh, had its uh, share of criticism uh but you know on a, on a personal level i can appreciate and I, I felt like you really turned a corner uh, mm -hmm. the last few months. Uh, you know, you, you were coming on more, being a little more uh, critical, a little more independent um, uh, minded. Uh, but, you know, the Republican uh, Party, they had uh, in a lot of ways um, singled you out uh, for some criticism. Just uh, your reaction on that. Did, did you feel attacked yeah, at all? Know, I, I think, um, well, I think there were a couple of strategies uh, at hand. Um, but one of them is the very reason I went in to run anyway is because, you know, for a whole lot of reasons, uh, things like culture and uh, some of those issues, they, they're they the first ones to be cut or they're ones on the back burner. And so, I, you know, I knew it was going to be a tough fight and, and maybe I should have diversified myself a little bit more in my committee selection or things like this. But I stood up for where I felt it uh, was lacking. And um, I, you know, I hope, I hope there was some difference there 
And I think that uh, the way the administration has separated the group and we have some real strong people at the helm like uh, Gillette Leon Guerrero as the head of CAHA and some of the changes that I, that I put into place to strengthen those agencies, you know, the community, we are just talking about uh, the other day about our high rates of suicide and as a social scientist, I know 100% these kind of things are linked, but trying to get that message out to the community, especially when we have so many needs and so many hurts and so many wants, um, it's, a, it's a tough battle. And, and I know people are gonna continue to fight that battle and, mm -hmm. and help them understand that, you know, that soul of the community needs to be upheld as an important part of our community. Um, yeah, so. Mm -hmm. Well, Sandra, uh, you, have, you have two yeah. months uh, left in, in this term. Uh, uh, how do you plan to, to finish it out? Well, I still have uh, several things that are on the slate. So I still have the Protehi Membedeno Siha resolution because, you know, when I understand the tough decisions, it it maybe doesn't seem to make a lot of sense um, in a pandemic to be advocating for our, our whales and our dolphins, but dolphin washing is a, a, a strong part of our economy when our economy gets back up. Whale watching can be maybe another new strong part of our economy, but also these are the resources of our island and the tomorrow people and it's all related um to you know subsistence and and commercial fishing the whole the whole gamut but also next week we have a public hearing for my intra-regional commerce commission because we need to be less dependent on the outside we need to put some teeth into actually diversifying like we've said for the last 20 years so hopefully that commission will um help come up with commerce potential between us in the region, be it Taiwan or the Philippines or or Pohnpei, I mean, uh, or, or the Northern Mariana Islands. So we have that. I have a bill um, to do some things, uh, hopefully for the homeless population. So I still have several things that I'm trying to get uh, on the slate for November and December and go out with as much of a bang as I can. And I can say that um, maybe it wasn't so visible to everybody because there were a lot of assumptions about you know how in I was or not, but I voted my conscience and I was independent of any group, any clique, uh, any pandering each and every time and my voting record shows it and I stand firmly on that voting record. Um, but uh, yeah, to go out with a, a bang and you know, I have about nine, uh, eight laws at this point that I can stand on. And um, to be quite frank, some of our, our top vote getters don't have uh, that many. So um, obviously that's not the whole scale of what people look at, but I, those will be around for a good long time and I'm proud of them. Right. What are you gonna miss the most? What are you gonna miss the least? <laughs> You know, I, I guess I always had my anthropological hat on, you know, that's one of my degrees. And so uh, one of the things I would do from time to time is write down possible titles to an article or to a book <laughs> that I would write. Um, one of them is, uh, well, I believe in the intent. And then we all know that <laughs> anything can come after that. <laughs> But you know, it's it's the insights, it's the understanding what political life really is, and um, I will continue to to contemplate that for a while because I I think some of that the public needs to be more aware of. The part that I'll miss the least is um, those. Uh, well, there's uh, yeah. I guess it would be those who stir up things for their benefit and not for the community's benefit because I'm never down for anything that's not for the community's benefit. And I saw a whole lot of that. Um, so to be quite frank, yeah, uh, the stirring up of things to stir them up and, and 
at the community's expense instead of um, the possibilities of what could have been to their benefit. So wow. um, that's something I will continue to advocate against. <laughs> so having said that, uh, what would you title uh, if you were to write a book about your term in the legislature, what would you title it? Ooh. No curse the, words, please. The one, there's one, I, I don't know about the whole book, but you know, like I said, I've got my chapters or articles, but there was one I couldn't um, quite decide on. And I don't know how people would interpret it. Maybe I won't even use it as a title, but uh, the one I couldn't uh, uh decide on absolutely was uh, swimming with the sharks or swimming with the piranhas <laughs> um, because swimming with the sharks you know we got sharks here and piranhas aren't here thank goodness nobody's released them in our rivers or anything crazy like that but you know it gets a, it can get a little tough so yeah but as far as the title of an entire book, I haven't thought of that one yet. Yeah, Senator, <laughs> let me ask you, are, are, because uh, you, you ran on a, on a platform, you know, uh, dealing a lot with the buildup and, uh, you know, the, there's lack of accountability, uh, transparency. So to go from uh, being someone out in the community uh, kind of protesting this to getting a seat and being able to actually do something about it, are you saddened now that you're kind of going to be leaving this venue in, in, in January? Well, you know, I have thought about that um, because, you know, I want to continue to advocate and, and, and I know there were ears out there that, that didn't want to hear it, but a true leader has to advocate for what's best for the community in the long term. And so if it's going to cost us more than we gain, you know, I I think that's a real issue. So, um, you don't want him or him, right? yeah, you know, the one thing I've learned is uh, you can be ignored by uh, the forces that be um, as a senator and as a community member. But um, I'm I'm really pleased that several of the senators, um, two of the ones here, are strong advocates for the community. And I know that if I have a concern or a bill uh, or something like that, you know, I could reach out to uh, these senators in particular and others because they are here for the, the good of the community and they're here for the long-term view about we might get some short-term benefits, but, you know, we have to think long-term and generationally. Mm -hmm. Um, we've seen those stories over and over. We're still battling Agent Orange. We're still battling um, PFAS. We're still battling the Ordot land dump and uh, who knows what below it. So, um, yeah, I, I, uh, I will still advocate for those, uh, those good things. Thank you, Senator. Uh, let's go back to... Uh... Uh, Senator Sabina, uh, Senator uh, Terlahi, I guess just a final message here, if, if you could, uh, to the voters and uh, all of you guys, uh, all of you ladies, uh, if you could, final message. Uh, and we'll go with uh, Senator Sabina first. Uh, yes, yeah, so I want to thank everybody out there that put their trust in me uh, to, uh, for the 36th Farm Legislature. And just like I, you know, ran on the platform sustainability, um, I am going to continue this work uh, to restore the health of our community and our economy. And I will work very hard to do that. And um, yeah, and looking forward to it. Looking forward to working with my colleagues and, um, you know, our people. Thank you. Senator Marsh Titano, maybe not the result you were hoping for, but uh, still, if you could, a message to the people. Well, again, it would be thanking everybody. You know, 9,000 votes, like I said, out of the number that, that came out is no small number. And it is being on the cusp. It shows where a lot of the community's priorities are and their understanding of the issues uh, in the big term. So, you know, I just really thank them and I ask them to continue to advocate for the benefit of all of us. Yeah, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, like I said, I'm mm -hmm. still here. So yeah. all, uh, all along the way, I've thought about the, the things I wanna tackle next. And I have about three things lined up. 
Uh, one of them, I don't know how much uh, following I'd get, but I want it to be a podcast on empanadas starting <laughs> around the island and then the archipelago and then out from there because empanadas are worldwide. But but I, I have other more substantive things that mm -hmm. I, I want to do as well. I'm down for an um, empanada thing. <laughs> you know, well, yeah, you know, Senator yeah. tied to know. Uh, you know, I'm still kind of surprised uh, you, you came out number 16. I was really thinking you were going to uh, make it into the top 15. Um, so, you know, like you said, you still have a couple months left, uh, whether you title a chapter swimming uh, with the piranhas or whatever. <laughs> swimming when, when y'all. Yeah, be a shark, all right? <laughs> <laughs> and we'll, we'll close it out with uh, Senator Terlahi. Senator Terlahi, message uh, to the voters and the people of Guam before if we I let you just go. say Senator Kelly is a very courageous woman, and she inspires me every day with the hard work and the courage that she has. And, uh, you know, she ha she really cares for our community, and I want to thank her for all of that. And we're not done yet, so we're going to continue to work very hard. I know it. But, uh, you know, to all my colleagues, uh, you know, in different issues, they, they're very inspirational. And I want to say the new candidates, they were they were awesome. And we had some candidates that really, really called us to task. And I'm so grateful for that. And I think uh, the people of Guam should be very grateful that we have people who will continue to want the legislature to be the best that it can be. And that's that's what we're going to work hard for. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, Paul, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the trust. And thank you. And please, my, uh, my ears are open to you all the time and I uh, just let me know how best we can uh, serve you and we are going we're not going to slack on the work I think that's uh, the panel that you've got before you they're some of the hardest workers in the legislature so but thank you again to the people of Guam thank you for getting the messages out to the media and uh, thank you to the media I mean for getting the messages out and thank you again to the people of Guam for voting for caring enough about Guam to vote thank, thank you. you thank you thank thank senators you. Uh, there's Thank virtual. There's still Rischetti. We still got some Rischetti left. There's still virtual Rischetti, guys. And it, and it is better the morning after. <laughs> it is, yeah. It's uh, marinated for a day. <laughs> it's it's even it's a, actually it's approaching Guzzeria like texture now. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. We'll see you. God bless and goodbye. At Nine nineteen. We've got more of the link coming up next right here on the Breeze ninety three nine. Good morning. Catch the link on Breeze. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates.